Hello to all the hair besties in the land. Well, today is all about a hair matey, Dominique. And you're from London. He's from London. Hi, guys. And he was my model uh, back at the London show about six months ago. So this is your grown out ombre balayage. It's pretty cool. Do you guys hear that damn cricket in the background we're trying to film? There's this crazy cricket. We're just working with it. Please just ignore it, right? But I am having a paranormal hairtivity shirt and this is not really a paranormal situation because we're just refreshing his hair. But hey, why not? We still don't know what's going to happen because for you guys, it's going to be a paranormal hairtivity because I'm going to use a very special secret surprise recipe and it's 130 volume and I'm going to show you guys how I utilize it. A lot of you guys have been sending me messages asking about 130 volume, what does it do, how do you utilize it. So today that's what we're going to do. Are you ready to get started Dom? Can't wait. Look at those chest hairs though. <laughs> show up and show them off. Should we balayage your chest hairs? Uh, we're gonna do it. No, we're gonna do it. <laughs> balayage those chest hairs. <laughs> no, he's so shy. He's so shy. He's a hair matey, and he's shy. Do your little signature hair flip. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it with with the crickets in the room. Do you want to swing, swing as well? Yeah, swing it. Swing it. Oh man. Oh, uh, I didn't wait. Expect a moment. You're making me look like a vampire. Look how you have like this nice fleshy skin, and I look like a, a ghost. On vacation. Yeah, yeah. Flip it. Here. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, guys. So I already mixed up my balayage clay-based lightener concoction, and I like to mix up the product pretty thick to where when you turn it upside down like this, it doesn't drip out. So that's how you know you have a good consistency. I like to add Olaplex to my mixture. You guys know what Olaplex looks like. Let me try to bring it on in there so you guys can see what Olaplex looks like. Anyway, so I squeeze 1 16th of an ounce only. When I balayage, I really don't use that much. And the reason why is because balayage is done with open air. At least when I do it, I don't use saran wrap or cling film. I do it all open air. So I literally just squeeze it just about that much, like that much, and it's barely, anything but is there. It does a lot. Less is more with Olaplex, especially when you balayage. And then I pour it in and then I stir it in after I already mix my balayage lightener. Are you excited Dom? Can't you're, wait. You're more just watching excited. me. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed. You're amazed? Always. You love Olaplex though. Yeah, you, love You Olaplex. use it in your salon, yeah? yeah. Okay, Look. so now we're gonna use my 130 volume, okay? So this is what it looks like, okay? And I'll show you how much I pour in. I literally only just sprinkle a little bit in there. Just a sprinkle. Just a sprinkle, okay, don't get scared, okay? 130 volume, okay, think about it. I'm using 50 volume developer, then I'm using Olaplex, so Olaplex makes it a 40. So I want to bring it back up to a 50 and possibly a 60. So by doing a little sprint, normally, listen, I normally use the scale, but in this situation we're filming in my room and there's this cricket in the background. Hopefully you guys don't hear him, but he's probably doing his mating call. You know how they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the cricket's doing a mating call. So, okay, let's do this. I couldn't find my scale, but oh, there, that's a nice, <laughs> that's a nice little drop. But if you get too carried away, you'll be okay. So now what I find is that because I like a drier consistency, I feel that because you're adding the 130 and the Olaplex, it does make it a little bit more um, creamier and less of a clay-like consistency. So what I do is I can add a little bit more clay powder in there if I feel like it. So it's up to you guys. So let's get started. Okay, so he likes to wear his hair kind of tousled, messy, beachy all over the place. Yeah. That's just how Dominic goes. Stops, right? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So anything to say before we get started? Um, just do your thing. Do my thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you guys my shooting star technique. I've been doing it in a couple shows, but I want to record it for you guys because I feel like I want to share with all the hair besties and all the hair mighties in the land. <laughs> So with that being said, I take out the first section and I, you can see it's everything from the parietal, okay? It doesn't have to be super perfect, but if you want it to be cleaner, you could do just a clean straight line from everything in the front and up to the center, okay? So I'm gonna pull his hair out this way and just kind of put all his hair to one side. So this is a very organic placement, as I like to say, okay? So I'm going to take my clay 
base lightener and put all in a dish. Okay, swipe the paddle. So I swipe it like this, just to make sure that you don't have too much product on the bristles, okay? So with that being said, I am going to elevate and lift his hair out and put it all down the center and then stroke the product up into the face frame. Just like that. To the center and then stroke my weight up close to his face frame. Then I elevate the hair up. I make sure that all the little baby hairs are out because you don't want to highlight the baby hairs. No. So you drop the baby hairs out because they will look like breakage. So I usually shake the hair a little bit to make sure all the little tiny hairs are out and I lift the hair up, okay, and I stroke it down the center, and I'm gonna actually overlap Dominic's hair, um, the previous lighten area, because he has potential in going even lighter. Okay, so I stroke it up, just like so, and then bring it into his hairline. Now be careful when you bring it into the hairline, because you don't want like a hot spot because the hair around the hairline turns blonde really fast and you don't want him to have like these two little antennas like those crickets. Like crickets. Yeah, you don't want like two little antennas. Hello everyone, I have two little bright spots in the front. So then I bring it back and I over direct him back. Let's turn the chair a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I over direct everything back because his hair is at level 9, he does have potential to go lighter because it is dry balayage, okay? Um, even with the 130, it's not going to lift as light as you think. So the 130 is going to give us that boost that we, ne we need. When Dominic models for um, the show in London, we bleached our hair nine times, did we yeah. not? And it was still healthy because we used Olaplex in it, so it's fine. But we need him as model on, sh uh, on stage at the show nine times. So see, I'm going to overlap that section. I'm going to put the paddle down. I'm going to stroke it through. Okay, less is more. And you don't have to penetrate the ends. I just stroke it over the surface, okay? And then I put a mesh sheet down in the back. So I'm gonna lay a mesh sheet down in the back, and I'm gonna repeat the same method on the opposite side. I find that when you mix the clay lightener a little drier, it performs a lot better when it's dry. When it's too wet, it becomes too runny. Okay, so repeating the same thing on the opposite side, I just used the back of the rat tail part of the brush and section out everything from the parietal. Move the hair back. And a, to me, I go in organically with this. I don't try to section too much. I like to see where the hair falls. This works well on both men and women. But for me, because he's a guy, I feel like when I go in more organically, it looks more natural and not so forced into sectioning type of look. So I almost want it to look uh, more natural. So this is the shooting star technique, guys. Doing the face frame first will help get everything out the way before I do the rest. So going in, hitting that face frame, okay, right from the center parting. Shake the hair a little bit just to get the baby hairs to come out. Don't highlight those baby hairs, okay. Lift the hair up and then stroke it from the center and then work your way into the hairline. Less product, don't be too heavy with the product, with the hairline. If you feel like you went too heavy, just wipe it off with the back of the rat tail, just like that. And th these are huge sections. I take huge sections because um, I find that, you know, you don't have to waste too much time trying to isolate one section and get the same job done. This way you can do it all at once, do it quick. Okay, I'm gonna turn the side so you can see how I over direct everything back and just lay the product right over heavy. The heavier, the better. Okay, take notice of how dry the product is. That's what gives it that natural feel. Okay, and then I'm gonna stroke it through the ends because we want to make it extra icy. Like, like he said, he wears his hair very beachy, so yeah. it doesn't have to look super, super perfect. I feel like the more um, almost like distressed jeans. The more we wear our jeans, it looks more lived in, more natural. We want to give them more of a, a lived in distressed feel to his hair without actually being distressed. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be distressed. Okay, so then from that point on, I'm going to turn him around. I want to show you guys this. I would bring these two together. 
and kind of clip this out the way. Just like that. All right guys, so the top of his head, I'm taking the crescent shaped diagonal section from one ear to the other side into a point right here. So we're taking really large blocks, okay? So this whole entire block, I'm actually gonna balayage this whole entire section. You can see the last balayage I gave him over a half a year ago. It still looks really gradient. And because it's at a level nine, it still has potential to be lighter. So I find that when I go in this way, it looks more natural. Okay, so I'm gonna take this whole entire block and I'm gonna go in very heavy. I'm actually gonna just kind of slap the product on there. <laughs> See, I go in heavy and I find the more heavier I go down the center, the more lift I get. So if you go heavy the product, you're gonna get more lifting power. I feel like a lot of times we're a little too conservative and we just go with these little single strokes. We try too hard to blend and we're not getting the lift that we want. So go heavy down the center, use that same product and stroke that product up close to the scalp, okay? So I'm gonna stroke it up and because I use minimal product at the scalp, it's gonna look a little bit more subtle in the lift up here and the product looks a little bit more lighter through the mid shaft because of that packing of the product. Okay, so usually in the corners here, I don't pack too much product in the corners because I don't want people to see that delineation between the natural um, from the smaller parting of the crescent shape. You don't want to see any stripage, okay? So minimal product, and if I feel like it's too harsh, I go back in and I wipe it down like that. It's very forgiving. Okay, so now I'm gonna drag the product down through the ends. Now through the ends, I could be a little bit more subtle with the stroke, you only want to sit on the surface of the hair versus overly penetrating the hair. Because it is a nine in most parts, a level nine is able to continue to lift, okay? The Olaplex will ensure that it's protected, that I add Olaplex in there. And the 130 will ensure that I lift it to its maximum potential. See that? So I'm gonna stroke it through. And Dominic is going to keep his hair down the whole entire time. Um, so this is over directing the hair. Okay, so check it above, make sure everything is nice and saturated. Not saturated, but nicely applied. But after I do this, I take another section, which is a large block. I take another large block and I'm gonna bring this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn Dominic to his side. As you can see, I'm taking a large block. I'm gonna give his hair a little shake so any baby hairs can come out. So the reason why I call it the shooting star technique is because his head is like the star and it's like the dust and the tail of the star that is shooting like a comet. <laughs> All right, so let's get started on this side. So going on an angle here, so get to see what it looks like at an angle. His head is down. He could be on his cell phone, like most of our clients are. They could be looking on their Instagram or watching this YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, all <laughs> yes, or, you know, uh, go on an email or whatever, uh, looking down the whole time while you're doing this technique. So again, I'm doing the same thing I did on the first section. And I find that this technique goes by really fast. Um, if I wasn't talking, it actually goes by really fast because you're taking such large blocks and usually I could finish my client's hair in less than 15 minutes um, just doing this technique alone. So I find that you could do more heads at once, okay? So this is a whole entire chunk of hair, okay, that I'm applying the lightener to. And you can choose to penetrate the ends depending on how light it is or you could choose to just dust it and do a retouch. And I'm gonna repeat the same method throughout Dominic's whole head. <laughs> Dominic, how are you feeling? Great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to be blonde. Well, you're already blonde. Yeah, I know, but I got the blonde bug. You're gonna, you're gonna be even blonder. It's so exciting. Can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. So you can see the top of Dominic's head here. So I'm gonna continue this by doing another crescent from this side over to the opposite because you got to take large blocks guys that's how you get this done quick and also be very effective because you're actually working around this whole head so i'm going to place the lightener on this as well so take a look at how big this entire block is guys that's what makes life easier if you want to make him super blonde you can actually lift it up first put the blonde underneath 
this panel and then work on top of that block. And that's how you get the hair super, super blonde. But I don't want him to be super blonde. I want him to look natural. Because I'm putting the highlight on the top, what happens is when Dominic lifts his head up, it actually becomes an underlight. So the top of his natural falls over the highlight, and it actually looks super natural. Super natural! <laughs> I like that! <laughs> so, do you guys know what I'm saying? Because if you actually paint the top, what we normally do, it can look stripy. So because we're doing it under, um, over directing it and the hair flips back, it looks like an under lighted type of balayage highlight, which I find to be very, very cool. So as you can see here, this is this giant block here. I'm just going to apply it where all the darkness is first. This is where you really want to go heavy because you don't want to go too heavy here just yet because it's already blonde. You want to make sure you pack the product on really good through the mids. Um, I usually go in horizontal like this and pack the product on and then I turn my brush vertically and then I stroke and blur my way up to the routage area, okay? Because I know 130 sounds scary and that's why it's we don't know what's going to happen, but I do, but I know you guys don't. So that's why we're making this little video tutorial for you guys, because I was like, you know what? We think the world needs to know how to utilize this. I get so many emails regarding 130, I thought it'd be kind of cool for you guys to see how I utilize it. It's, I haven't really made a video sharing it, so this is the time. Dom, are you scared of 130? Oh, <laughs> at first, yeah. But, but do you utilize it? I know you're in London. Do you have yeah. access to no, it? No, we don't know. The highest we get is 40 volume. The highest you get is 40? Yeah, and obviously with Olaplex, it changed it to a 30 volume. Yeah. So would you love to have one Oh my god, I would love. So how are you, you going to get it? Um, I have no idea. That is the thing. That's a good question. Because they don't sell it in the store. You have to like order it online. Yeah. Um, well, our our law is different to the US as well. Like we have different regulations. <laughs> so. I love how you're talking underneath your hair. I know. Yeah. It's like who who are we talking to? Is you you look like that girl from the movie yeah. the, the Ring? Yeah, the Ring. The Ring. <laughs> and it's it's yeah. So I always lift it up to make sure it's well blended. But the cool thing about using a balayage lightener usually is that it's very forgiving even if you feel like the line could be too harsh, it's still very, very forgiving. So take notice of his hair in the back. When I turn Dominic to the back, you can see how he has a lot of hair down through the nape. But I'm actually gonna leave his nape out. And the reason why, I want that dark shadow underneath the back because I want the highlights to separate and when you see the highlights fall over the dark areas that there is a platform that springs from so there's dimension. I feel like if we made everything too blonde it'll look dippity and on a guy it might not look as masculine I feel so I still want to keep his masculinity. Um, if you feel like you want to make that blonde you can but I always take the haircut into consideration so if his hair had lots of layers in it then I will actually go down and ombre that area because his hair is mainly one length. I decided to leave the back part out so that way there's a platform so there's dimension. So again, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this one section here just in case because sometimes it comes out a little different. Okay, um, again, this is a really large block and I'm going to turn him blonder. <laughs> All right, so packing the product on heavy down the center as usual and then working my way up. And because we're taking such a large block, we actually get the job done a lot quicker as if we were to do it the more traditional way, going from the back up to the top and doing single strand highlight, not only will it take forever, but we're not going to get the same, in, the, the same brightness and dramatic impact. So I find that doing it this way, over directing it, not only strike an interest for our clients, but it makes it a lot more fun for us in a salon scenario. So I'm going to do the same type of stroking pattern all the way to the next section and you'll see that everything is over directed. Down back here he's a little bit more golden so I really want to make sure I penetrate this to make it a lot icier. So I'm going to pull everything through and really pack it on because this area here has potential to actually be super, super blonde. So I'm just going to go really heavy on it. Okay. Think about when we over direct haircuts, 
uh, you create movement. When we're over directing color, we're creating movement. So it's the same concept that we're doing. We want to create movement and impact. So if you're to go up horizontal balayaging, it's gonna look like a horizontal balayage sometimes, but I feel like over directing crisscrossing, you're gonna create more of a blended look, seamless integration, and um, more natural look because we're hitting it from the back side. So since it's hitting from the back, he's gonna lift it to the front when he lifts his head back up. It's all gonna be concealed. So it's gonna look, you know, you get the maximum natural impact from it looking more blended. Okay, we're gonna check the bottom, make sure it's blended, and then he should be done. Okay. One more section, guys. One more section, turn it this way. And this is the last section we're gonna balayage. And remember, we're gonna leave all of this out back here. So I'm gonna turn him this way so you guys get to see this whole block here. Um, I can see where he still has some dark here, so I'm going to section that out. Leave that down because I don't want anything to turn orange. I do want to overlap because I want him to be blonder than what he was before. Turn Dominic facing you guys a little bit. Tool the hair besties. So you guys get to see how I work it from this angle. Okay, this is the last section. Stroking up. I find the bigger section you do, the better. Sometimes I take small sections, but I find that once you get a little bit more advanced with it, you can take larger blocks, larger sections, get it done faster, and um, not just to get it done faster, but also it just, you know, looks, it's easier and more fun if I feel that you get to have maximum impact and do it fast. Um, if you feel that you create too much of a stripe because sometimes it's your first time, you can always shadow root your client down. You could put a seven uh, demi permanent uh, color gloss at the routage and then do a nine on the way down. I find that that way it can um, correct any situation if you cause the product to be a little hot rooty. Okay, and then he is done. You are done, Dominic. How do you feel? Excited. Excited. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> now you guys are probably wondering how he's gonna get his head back up, mm. right? <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know, but they don't. This is the top of Dominic's head, as you can see here. Um, I'm gonna turn him to the side so you can see what he looks like. And then he's processing in the front, but in the back, I'm leaving everything from the nape down. So you get to see how I'm gonna keep all of this natural. When the light lays over, it's gonna become a dimensional platform. If, if you wanted to highlight it, you can too. You can highlight this down horizontally down, or you can choose to take this and over direct everything to the front as well. Depending on the haircut, depending on the weight line that you're looking for. So now you guys are probably wondering, what are we gonna do? <laughs> are, are you okay down there, Dominic? <laughs> How are you down there, fellow hair matey? Okay, but can you hear me <laughs> down there? He's gonna be like coming out from the TV like this towards the screen <laughs> Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna insert my fingers Ooh, into here. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, head up <sighs> Reveal his face Ooh, Look at you. Do I look paranormal? You look paranormal. It's another exciting day of paranormal activity Take a look at that that's pretty cool, right? So turn around. So that's what's going on. You get to see how he's processing. So we All right, so we only took about eight sections for Dominic's hair. As you can see, turn around. Are you excited? Really excited, can't wait. Okay, so <laughs> we're talking about like how in the US you have to have a license to buy, you know, like Red and Shady Q or Shorts Coffee Gora or yeah. any professional hair products. But you said that in London. Oh, yeah, in all UK, yeah. You, basically, you haven't got a cosmetology license. You just qualify in VQ level one or two or three. Yeah. And then you're good to go. So basically, you can go into a trade warehouse. Some of them, don't, you don't even need a trade card to even get in. You just so go. So your client. Yeah, can, 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 if they're going to a, like a trade area and pick up a Weller color off a shelf and apply it to the shelf. 
Like, they'll do that, but then come to you to correct it. That's the hard part, because then they also lie about what they've done and how they've used it or what they've used. Man, and I feel kind of spoiled here in the US, because I feel like we, we have a lot. We, the only way we can purchase those colors to get a license, so our clients are unable to go in and buy it without a license anyway. Plus, they, they're unable to read the, yeah. you know, the number codes and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, Whereas they can just go into a store over there and ask the counter woman or man or whatever and get the peroxide and the color. Mix it up the cell for home and apply it to the cell. <laughs> well, and then the, it the, the, well you know what? Him. That's why we have paranormal activity. I feel like we have more in the UK. You have that. a bunch of paranormal <laughs> situation in the UK, and then we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That's why you charge them to correct it, yeah, right? Yeah, but then they don't want to pay. But they, Okay, so they don't want to pay. That's no, why and they then don't, don't want to be out in 10 minutes. Oh! <laughs> Well, no, not ten minutes, <laughs> like three hours. Three hours. But that's why I feel like we should be grateful and not be so concerned and be so insecure about what our client do. Because at the end of the day, it's our work. Our client come to us because we are artists and not be so worried about them, what, what they're putting on their hair or if they're able to get the color themselves. If you look at it from a universal perspective, you start to see like, wow, you know, like why are we stressed about, you know, there's box colors will always be there. We have to have confidence with ourselves as stylists. Be confident in yourself and not be insecure. Be scared what our clients doing, where they're getting it, because at the end of the day, it's not the product, it's not the paint or the it's color, us. it's us. The, the, well, the stylist, it's artist. Done. No, it's, it's <laughs> us, the hair besties community, or the hair matey, <laughs> the hair matey, because I think that it makes life more funner because if we didn't have paranormal situations that we don't know what's gonna happen, our job would be kind of boring. I feel like we'll always do the same thing because we're really good at it. Sometimes I feel like paranormal activities yeah. though, like give you better results. Like you end up yes. getting to a certain position. Absolutely. But the only time then the client brings in and they say, I want that color. But then you're like, well, I took uh. that. <laughs> You have to start with black to go blonde to go well, blonde to go black. I think this is a great story to share with the hair besties in the land because I think that they're unaware, you know, from an international perspective. Yeah. But, you know, I think your time's almost up. You got, I think it's like got 10 more minutes. Yeah. And then we're going to rinse you and tell you and we'll be right back. Yay! We are finally done with the shooting star technique. How do you feel? Man, Bloody. you like a, like Fabio? Yeah, like a, a god. <laughs> like, like, like a fairy tale romance novel. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> no, a merman. You look like a yeah. merman. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. I love your hair. It's sexy and it's still masculine. You know, I kind of want to see what your hair will look like up in a man bun. Here, do a little man bun deal. Here, put it up. Cause this man, I, mean, I wish I could do a man bun. Grow oh my hair. gosh, I need to grow my hair out, guys. What do you think? Should I grow my hair out long? Like Dom, leave comments below. Tell me if I should grow my hair long and do like a balayage. <laughs> do you think I should grow it out long? Yeah. Well, hey, we need to see what the hair besties think first. Oh, oh, there goes that hair, that man bun. Oh, there you go. <laughs> all right, guys, that's the shooting star technique complete with 130 volume and Olaplex to answer all your questions you guys have been asking me on Facebook and Instagram because I read them. I may not be able to answer all the time at once, but I always make these videos to make sure you guys know that I do see them. And I know Dom goes back yeah. home to London and watches it, right? Yes. Yeah. Fellow hair mate T. Are you gonna miss him? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right, leave comments, thumbs up, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the good stuff, all the links will be provided, and you can also stop Dominique on Instagram. Do, 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 do.